In this video, we're going to show that if the absolute value of a sequence, which you get by just taking the absolute value of each of the terms, if that absolute value sequence converges to zero, then the original sequence has to converge to zero as well. And we'll see very easily this is just a consequence of, of the definition. We really don't have to, to work very hard here. So let's, let's write down the definition. Uh, what does it mean for the absolute value sequence to converge to zero. So we know that means there's going to be some function. So there exists a function m from our domain of closeness to our codomain of eventually, such that if you have some positive real number epsilon, and m is past the eventually number, m of epsilon, then the distance between the nth, or in this case, the mth term of the sequence, which will be the absolute value of a sub m, and the proposed limit, 0, should be less than epsilon. All right, so this is our definition of the absolute value sequence converging to zero. But man, it really feels like this is too complicated, right? What could we do with this? Well, for starters, what are we doing writing minus zero? I mean, what a waste of time, right? So we could just write the absolute value of the absolute value of a sub m. And man, even just saying that out loud sounds kind of silly, right? The absolute value of the absolute value, right? How do you make it any more absolute? It was absolute the first time, right? This is basically saying how far away is AM from zero? And you, then you take that number and say, how far away is that number from zero? Well, it's the same number, right? So the absolute value of the absolute value, that, that's just the absolute value, right? There's, there's no difference there. And so what we conclude is that if we have this function M, and we choose some epsilon and we go out past the eventually number m of epsilon, then actually the absolute value of a m is less than epsilon. But well, let's just go one little bit further and toss this minus zero back in there. And now we see that the distance between a m and zero is less than epsilon. So using the exact same eventually function m, we get exactly the definition that a converges to zero, not just the absolute value, right? We would need that the mth term in the sequence, when you get past the eventually number for epsilon, is within epsilon of zero. And that's exactly what we have here, right? All these are equal to each other. So actually, even though we said this was the definition of the absolute value of a going to zero, it's also the definition of a going to zero. How nice is that? 